Welcome back to Continuous Decision Improvement. I'm Cindy Lambden, and we're here to talk today about part four of our process for continuous decision improvement, which is ACT. You have already done planning, you've done it, you've studied it, and now we need to act it and move it forward. And we're going to do that by following our continued process. Now we've already spent some time looking at context, uh, composition, communication, and control. Those are very important. Those continue to stay with us throughout this entire process. But what we're going to do now is take our scenario and we're going to move our lessons learned forward. And remember again, what we did is we went through two components, which is looking at the process indicators and the output indicators. And again, just a little warning that output indicators is not the same as outcome indicators. And we will fall back to that in just a second. So let's go ahead and let's move forward through the acting and learning of improvement. Now, what we wanted to do was take our quality gaps and our outcome gaps, and we want to pull them forward. You'll remember that what some of those items were, but let me refresh you first about what our scenario is, which is that, remember, we're taking our um, iOS 7 Apple product versus our Android. We've done our comparison. The group decided that they really wanted to move forward with the Android because it seemed to meet our values and our criteria very, very well. But we also needed to look back at, at that process for actually planning. How did we do that? Did we do it well? So we need to identify those next steps for how we can move forward. So first we're going to look at our process indicators. Remember that these are the gaps that we found. We found that that frame, it, even though it was predefined, it was very narrow. Very, very narrow. So the, one of the lessons learned for us is that in our next first opportunity, for decision planning here is that we need to widen our frame. We need to think more globally in terms of what our problem is. Secondly, we need to expand our alternatives. Even though they gave us a very narrow alternative set, would there have been harm in actually exploring it further by looking at BlackBerry or Windows? Or in fact, maybe there was another al alternative out there that we just didn't even know existed, but someone brought it forward because they knew about it. The other component is subject matter expertise. You really have to have solid expertise in the room in order for you to have credible information that people can make decisions off of. And then the third thing is expanding that values list because we found out that it's very important for people to have cameras, especially in a disaster situation. We saw it with Hurricane Katrina. We're seeing it with a local emergency that's happening here in our state currently. People very quickly use their cell phones to take pictures, send that information forward, including making sure that they were getting it to the television stations. But public health can take and leverage that so they can look at damage in an area and see what are the public health risks to the community. People are being very, very inventive and creative about how they use their devices. And I think we're going to continue to see that with more that it's introduced into our environment. Another component is looking at the output indicators. Now, we said it's really important to focus on making sure that people stay focused on the cognitive side, that deliberative robust exchange of information focused on the issues, on the process, on the ideas, and not on the individuals that are creating, uh, may be creating a little bit of a disturbance in the room. In our particular case, we knew that they were focused. They were committed to that process. They, they were bought in and they were ready to go. But what we did not ferret out quite so early was, again, the reluctance of certain iPhone users to make a switch to Android. And it usually was around the user friendliness of the device that really made a big difference. Now, could we have changed this if we had done our planning in a different way? And that's where it becomes important for us to look at this closely. It's important for us to look in that rearview mirror, go back to that planning process, 
look at it. How could we have designed this better using the four Ds because we identified the problem best as it was given to us, but we needed to design how those decisions were actually going to be made. Was there something that we could have done to mitigate this reluctance? Maybe it was by using a different mechanism for how we actually gathered our information. We used brainstorming by the group, but maybe there were some shy people in the room who did not share their information, and that's what we needed to mitigate. Remember that this all is very circular. It always moves in a circle. It always moves forward. So in this case, we're moving from act back into planning because now we need to take these lessons that have been learned about widening our frame, about our creative alternatives, about looking at the values, and also about looking at how we could decrease that resistance and change it at the next opportunity in our planning cycle. Whether it was about composition, we found that we had a gap with our subject matter expertise. We needed to change that at the very next opportunity. We needed to look at the scope and the context. The communication was going well, except we found that maybe some people weren't speaking up. So was there an opportunity about how we needed to go about that? And then two, was there something that the leader needed to do to step in and actually make an adjustment even in the moment? And that sometimes does have to happen. You have to hotspot. You have to step in, stop the process, slow it down, ask them again, what do we need to change? What's not working well? Make an adjustment in the moment. Don't wait until it's over. You don't have to wait till it's over. Stop it. If it's not going the way that you want, change it in the moment and then move it forward. It would be important to keep track of the types of things that are coming up, whether it's about the frame, whether it's about the alternatives. Is it that we're not communicating well? Keep track and keep making those adjustments with each, with each opportunity for our decision-making process. It all leads back to, again, how we plan. We must slow down. We must become deliberative about how we move through this planning cycle. We also need to remember that it's the choice mobile that's gonna help us get to our destination. Remember what I said at the beginning of my video set, which is that there are gonna be lumps and bumps, curves and hills, and that we're gonna to have to negotiate around each and every one of those. And we're gonna get there through this device, through this platform, the importance of trust and humility. You as a leader must be trusted in order for your group to be able to give you the best quality information and the willingness to be vulnerable and possibly even really put themselves out there in a way that they may not have before in order to make these decision processes even a more rich experience. And you as a leader must also be willing, again, to be have humility because all decisions may not have good outcomes, but they can be based on quality process improvement. And that is, in fact, what we have been trying to drive through these videos for you today. I would like to thank you very much for being here. I know it takes a lot for you to take time out of your day, but we hope that these processes will actually help you it's not something that you have to wait to do. You can implement it immediately. Small steps will help move this process forward. Don't go for the big giant steps, small steps for humanity, just like when we stepped on the moon. We would like to thank the Centers for Disease Control because without them, they would not be able to provide this quality education to you through Cal Prepare. Thank you so much for being here today. And we look forward to having other opportunities to bring you quality improvement information to help move your improvement processes forward. Thank you and have a good day.